Welcome back with Niaga Awani. Uh, big investors have cut uh, their allocations to equities to the lowest level since the collapse of uh, Lehman Brothers at the height of the global financial crisis as rising recession fears spark worries about corporate profits. According to Economist magazine, stocks are sinking. Uh, a, a cost of living crisis is uh, in full swing and the spectra of global recession looms. But uh, you wouldn't know it by looking Looking at the rich world's housing markets, many of which continue to break records. Homes in America and Britain are selling faster than ever. House prices in Canada have soared by 26% since the start of the pandemic. The average uh, property in New Zealand could set you back more than uh, almost 1 million uh, NZ dollar, about 640,000 uh, uh, USD, and in Increase of nearly 46 percent since 2019. Uh, we have on the line right now Sean Said, the IQI uh, uh, chief economist. Uh, Sean, thank you for being with us. First of all, uh, you have been sharing with us uh, for a very long time that stagflation is back like in the 1970s, and real estate has become the new global currency. It looks that your insight and narrative is spot on. Uh, why do you think global, sophisticated and smart investors are moving funds into real estate? Thank you, Harris. At the start, you did mention that stocks are sinking, according to Economist magazine. And investors, they think that moving into tangible assets could be a key strategy. Look at uh, Blackstone, uh, which is one of the biggest fund managers in the property sector, having an AUM of $881 billion. At the start of the year, if you pick up Financial Times, 17th January, they took position in home partners and into rent-to-buy market, uh, tantamount to $6 billion. So when these fund managers and asset managers like BlackRock having $9 trillion of AUM, they move into the market, the sovereign wealth funds, the endowments, the institutional investors, they are moving into real estate market. It clearly indicates that real estate is getting attraction. Uh, apart from the traditional asset uh, uh, investment that is stocks, bonds, and cash, more and more investors are going into alternatives, that is real estate, gold, private equity, arts, uh, vineyards, you know, and uh, farmland. So these investments are getting attraction and they are here for a very long period of time. And the markets continues to stay uh, volatile as we move forward for the next two to three years. Uh, as you can see, Sean, we have witnessed in the last uh, six months that sovereign wealth like Qatar Investment Authority, GIC of Singapore, which I'm going to list a bit more other than GIC of Singapore, endowments like Harvard and Yale, family offices, asset uh, managers like BlackRock and Blackstones are taking a huge position in the real estate. Yeah. So the question is, are we expected the new uh, asset trend to be longer than expected or it's just going to be a temporary? Nina, I think it will be longer, as you mentioned about Harvard. And in one of your programs three weeks ago, I mentioned that one of the alums from Harvard Business School, I'm talking about 2003, he convinced the Harvard management company, which controls $40 billion of asset, to invest in New Zealand farmland. And in 2017, one of the alums, again from Harvard Business School, uh, convinced the management, the Harvard management company that runs the endowment fund, to invest in Hong Kong. And 10 days ago, if you have read the news, Harvard Endowment is setting up their office in Singapore. And in your program three weeks ago, I said a lot of uh, family offices are looking at Singapore, Monaco, Dubai, London, and New York, and they are setting up family offices. And Harvard Endowment coming into this part of the world, especially Asia Pacific, it's a clear signal that, you know, Asia Pacific remains on the global investors' radar, and real estate market is here for a very long term. And in tough times, uh, as we have always said at IQI, the only fixed asset that goes up is land. And IQI is dealing in land. And Harith mentioned that real estate has become the new global currency, the book that we have written in 2015. It validates our point. Mm. All right, Bashan. Stocks and bonds are uh, actually still providing opportunities to many investors. So as per last week, Financial Times uh, dated July 19th, uh, Warren said uh, buying oil and gas stocks according to um, 
Berkshire, Berkshire Hathaway's latest 13 filing. He recently purchased approximately $26 billion of Chevron shares and $13 billion of Occidental Petroleum shares. So um, these aggressive purchases of major stakes in la uh, large oil and gas companies uh, indicate Buffet's view uh, on the sector and are meaningful in the face of lagging sentiment and positioning in this oil bull market. So uh, what do you think of this move from uh, him? I think Warren Buffett is a very sagacious investor. 27th February 2021, Warren Buffett was sitting on $150 billion and taking position in oil and gas, which is still very attractive because oil prices will stay high for the next two to three years. And not only real estate, but other sectors are attractive as well. Uh, you have healthcare, you have FMCMG, you have agriculture. So these investors still provide a lot of opportunities to those sagacious, sophisticated and smart investors who want to take long term position. So it is not just real estate. In every market, there is an opportunity. It's up to the risk profile, the risk appetite, the exit strategy of investors, how they want to position themselves in these asset classes. So I still think there are a lot of opportunities in bonds, stocks, and of course, real estate as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Sean, a global real estate market like uh, Dubai and Canada remain uh, hot among investors. Uh, average price of a uh, Canadian home in, in Toronto, for example, is uh, $1 million. A uh, Dubai real estate market witness uh, $1 billion real estate trans uh, transaction every day. And last week, uh, the Dubai real estate market continued uh, its upswing, uh, according, uh, recording a total of about uh, 1.4 billion dirham uh, real estate transaction on Thursday, July 22nd. This is phenomenal and indicates investors' huge interest in this alternative asset class. What do you say? Again, Harris, I think in 1970s, what we witnessed that more and more investors, they went into tangible assets. When you talk about tangible assets, it means uh, real estate, gold, silver, farmland, uh, you know, arts, uh, vineyards, you know, these were the asset classes that, you know, investors took long position. And we are witnessing history again after 52 years, the way the markets are shaping up. We have got our offices is in Dubai and Canada, and both our offices are doing phenomenally good because the transaction volumes are going up. And in the last one month or so, Dubai has been very, very attractive uh, for global state investors. And I wouldn't be surprised if that market continues to say uh, for more for the next 12 months or 18 months or so. Um, Sean, and now let's talk about Malaysian real estate market. What's the outlook, trends, the hot areas or even insight? What does this investor need to know before making a strategic move in the real estate? In other words, how can they be street smart in property market? Uh, Nina, it's very, uh, it has been very bullish. Uh, at IQI, we have witnessed phenomenal growth last year. And even this year, uh, sales has been very solid. We continue to stay buoyant on Malaysian economy and Malaysian real estate. We have uh, got a lot of investors interest from Europe, uh, from Middle East, and from uh, North America as well. And most of the investors, they are looking at cities like uh, Kuala Lumpur, uh, Malacca, JB, Penang. So this clearly indicates that Malaysia has got strong uh, property market. The overall property market is a very mature market. The rules and regulation are pretty strict. So it is not like you buy property today and you sell it tomorrow. No, it's a very mature market for those sophisticated and smart investors who are looking at real estate uh, for the long term. As far as Malaysian investors are concerned, you need to understand what sovereigns are doing, what the endowments are doing, where pension funds are making investment. And you have to align yourself with these big investors, especially when investors like BlackRock and Blackstone and uh, Harvard Endowment, Yale Endowment, they are coming into Asia Pacific and they are making huge investment. So the investment I'm talking about, is not $100 million or $200 million. We are talking about $3 million, $5 billion, you know, $10 billion of huge investment. So I think investors, they need to align uh, their strategies according to these sovereign wealth fund, family offices, endowment, pension, and they should be on the right track. Mm -hmm. All right, that is Shan Said, uh, the Chief Economist of UIIQI.